Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, momentum builds for the Citation Longitude, Lawn Chair Balloonus faces hefty fine, and Unique USA confirmed staff reductions. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom, it's March 23rd, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The third aircraft in the Cessna Citation Longitude Flight Test Program recently completed its first flight. Test pilots Corey Eckhart and UJ Pessinen, along with flight test engineer Mike Bradfield, successfully tested various systems throughout the one hour and 40 minute flight. The aircraft will be used in the program for avionics and systems development, as well as collecting flight simulator data. The company has started assembly line flow in the company's East Campus Plant 4 manufacturing facility with the first four production longitude aircraft currently in progress. These aircraft are being built using the same tooling and manufacturing techniques that were applied on the longitude flight test articles. Brad Thress, Senior Vice President of Engineering said, the speed at which our team is achieving these milestones is an important indication to our customers of the maturity of the aircraft systems and proficiency of our processes. We continue to build momentum in the program and the team is dedicated to getting this world-class aircraft in the hands of our customers. The third aircraft joins the test program less than six months after the first longitude flew in October 2016. To date, the first two aircraft in the flight test program have completed 125 flights, logging more than 255 hours with certification expected by the end of this year. In July of 2015, Calgary, Canada business owner Daniel Berea tied 100 industrial grade helium balloons to a lawn chair and took off over the city in a stunt that he said was intended to promote his cleaning business. Last week, however, provincial court judge Bruce Fraser assessed a hefty fine against Berea, calling the stunt dumb and dangerous and unconscionably stupid. Berea pleaded guilty in December to charges of dangerous operation of an aircraft. In an agreement worked out with prosecutors, he will pay a $5,000 direct fine and contribute $20,000 to the charity of his choice, according to the report. Berea reportedly flew at an altitude of about 2.5 miles over Calgary. He had originally intended to parachute into the Calgary Stampede chuck wagon races, but the weather forced him to bail out early from his lawn chair. He was immediately arrested by police who had been watching him float over the Stampede grounds. As many as 24 aircraft took off or landed at Calgary during his flight. For his stunt, he was dubbed the Balloonatic by the media. But he has said he has no regrets for the stunt. He made his donations to the Veterans Food Bank and the Royal Canadian Legion's Poppy Fund. After the break, tough times for drone builder Unique USA. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Com. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. 
Here's the proof positive that bad times can come to just about anyone, including a major high flyer in the hobby drone market. An undisclosed number of employees at Unique USA will be losing their jobs, as confirmed by the company late last week. The company issued a statement saying it was planning to scale back our business structure to secure a balance between operational cost and revenue. We concluded that we upsized operations faster than our growth required. Unique recently received $60 million in funding from Intel through the Chipmakers Venture Capital Firm. SUS News reports that Unique and Intel will continue to develop future projects. Unique is only the latest drone manufacturer to announce it is cutting staff. The industry recently saw Otel, Parrot, 3DR, GoPro, and ZeroTech all announce layoffs. Media reports say that DJI has essentially won the entry-level drone war with its quickly evolving line of aircraft and that the de facto entry-level drone is now the Phantom 4 Pro. They predict that there will be more adjustments in the sector, including in post-production tools as the year progresses. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. For nearly a decade, ANN has offered special event programming promoting innovation and ingenuity this year, we're proud to announce that AUVSI's Exponential 2017 will inaugurate a new innovation feature series dedicated to all things unmanned, called naturally the Exponential Innovation Preview, XIP for short. The XIP is a massive online news teaser debuting the kind of innovations that make AUVSI a focal point for unmanned ingenuity. Shortly before Exponential 2017, approved participants will have the chance to take part in a program that will preview the unmanned tech population with a couple of dozen short three to four minute multimedia presentations offering a glimpse into what will be really new at Exponential this year. If you are an Exponential exhibitor and are planning the new announcements that might fit into XIP, please reach out to Jim at errol-news.net to get more info. After these messages, Boeing plans some layoffs. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best-selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Of so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Boeing has sent a 60-day notice to workers at the Washington State factories that involuntary layoffs have been scheduled for May. Media reports indicate that the latest round of layoffs will affect about 500 people. Boeing is reportedly adjusting its staffing levels to offset lost revenue and offer better prices to customers, as well as improve profit margins. Aircraft manufacturer PM&E Incorporated has announced that it has been approached and offered $12 million for the purchase of Evada aircraft. Evada, located in Wyoming, planned this year to be responsible for the mounting and assembly of parts of the Evada A4 aircraft and also commercializing the existing models, the Rally and the Century. OneWeb Satellites broke ground, marking the beginning of its construction on its estimated $85 million high-volume satellite manufacturing factory in Exploration Park, Florida. 
The factory is set to begin full series, autonomous assembly line production, integration, and satellite testing later this year. OneWeb Satellite's first order will include the production of 900 communication satellites for OneWeb's low Earth orbit constellation. Embraer's legacy 450 midlight business jet set speed records on its recent flights between California and Hawaii, according to the National Aeronautic Association. The Hawaii trip was a first for both the aircraft and the passengers from Calgary-based AirSprint, which operates Canada's largest fractional aircraft fleet, and was the Canadian launch customer for the Legacy 450. Missouri Governor Eric Greitens is planning to divest the state of one of its two fixed-wing aircraft. The proposed sale of the 1999 Peachcraft King Air C-90 is contained in the current budget proposal under consideration in the State House of Representatives. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. The last airworthy de Havilland DH-110C Vixen may fly again sometime in April, according to a report from Navy Wings in the UK, which is restoring the aircraft. The aircraft was donated to the Fly Navy Heritage Trust in September 2014, which took over maintenance of the aircraft. The organization said that the XP-924 is only days away from emerging from the 15 hangar at RNAS Yilton. The covers on the recently reinstalled port engine are going into place, and the starboard wing repair is in its final fettling stage. The pilot's cockpit is being repopulated with instruments and the autostab gyros are being refitted. The annual maintenance elements are also nearing completion and the flap repairs and re-rigging are now complete after nearly seven months of work. The ejection seats are being reinstalled next week and following the installation of the accumulator, we shall be carrying out undercarriage retraction tests. The organization said that this should give them the go-ahead for ground runs, leak checks, and systems testing, followed by high-power performance ground runs and taxi tests. All this in the next two to three weeks and their first flight of the season is scheduled for the second week in April. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, for additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage. The latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.